Our next talk is by Adriana Anderson. Adriana went to, uh, where did you go to undergrad? U of A? U of A. U of A. So in Tucson, and then uh, came up this way to PA school at Midwestern University in Glendale, which is about a half hour from here. She came to us at Mayo Clinic in Arizona and did a PA fellowship with us, and her focus was in critical care. Uh, since completing her PA fellowship, she has been uh, on staff with us at Mayo Clinic here in Phoenix, and she has a unique position at our institution that she shares with one other person. She works half-time in critical care and half-time in hospital medicine. So she um, knows twice as much as I do. <laughs> she knows a lot, and she's uh, very good at what she does. She speaks uh, locally and nationally and uh, is a wonderful clinician. So please help me welcome Adriana. Good morning. Thank you all so much. I am really happy to be here today to talk about one of my personal favorite topics, which is respiratory failure, which while I know is very, very exciting, uh, it is also very prevalent. I think it's something that we see on essentially a daily basis, regardless of which field we practice in. Uh, and I think my goal with this talk today is to really highlight some helpful clinical pearls that you can take into your practice when dealing with these respiratory failure patients. And as uh, Jennifer mentioned, I, I work in both critical care and hospital medicine, so I kind of see it a little bit from both sides and hopefully can bring a little bit of that to this. I have no disclosures to report. And the goal today is to essentially kind of talk a little bit about the pathophysiology of respiratory failure, break it down a bit, and then really use a case-based format to talk about some common cases that you might see in your practice and how to best optimize these patients. Without further ado, we will go ahead and get started with a very nice 42-year-old female with a history of breast cancer, though now in remission, who comes in with a several-hour history of chest pain and shortness of breath. She does take oral contraceptive pills, is a smoker, and to top it all off, she just came back from a Hawaiian vacation with her family. We note that she is tachycardic, tachypnic, and hypoxic with an O2 set of 85% on room air. And you do, you do note that she is in significant respiratory distress, clutching her chest, can't breathe, but her lungs sound clear. What do we think she has? PE, right? I'm not trying to trick you, she has basically every risk factor there is, right? <laughs> So what are some initial tests that you'd want to order for this patient? Just shout them out uh, to kind of work her up. CT, A, right off the bat, right, to diagnose that. Anything else that you want to get? EKG, echo. AVG, okay, for those of you that are looking at the slides, I do have a little hint there for you. One thing that I will really emphasize throughout my talk today is the importance of getting an arterial blood gas in our patients with respiratory disease.